Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krogh. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos, back again, episode 20. I never, you know, I wasn't, when we started this journey, I wasn't sure we would make it this far. But alas, here we are. Jason Shellcross, my handsome co-host, Alex Croak. Alex, see you got the beard coming back in. Very proud of you. Uh, how you been, buddy? How was your week? Uh, I'm okay. Um, I currently smell like the three P's of success, which is puke, pee, and poop uh, <laughs> from my newborn daughter. So... <laughs> congratulations on that yeah thank you yep shower this morning but that don't mean a thing if you got a baby so, <laughs> no it doesn't yeah so now things are going good working on the sleep schedule uh both mine and hers and uh how's work been uh i'm staying awake so that's i think good. that's an accomplishment yeah are you just um, injecting no, caffeine into your veins at this point not a caffeine guy. No coffee. Oh. The only yeah, the only caffeine I have is usually with uh, Captain or um, some other sort of mixer. So there you go. Yeah, Got to mix ca- uppers in your downers. Free. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, caffeine free. Um, that's the way for me. I learned that from Dare in in fourth grade. So. <laughs> Oh, my God. All right. Well, we have a very, very special episode lined up. Uh, Alex, I think you're going to get a lot of fun insight uh, out of this as our league's commissioner. We're going to be talking about how we think fantasy football leagues should be catered to COVID-19 this season. So I'm, t- I'm absolutely terrified for this. Oh, I know, because I'm going to sway you into everything that it's- I want. And then that's not going to happen. That's what our league is going to be because our league all listens to this. So I'm a very convincing person. We got this. It's going to go great. Well, it'll be spirited. I think there's so many rabbit holes that this is going to go into and hypotheticals like. All right. So, again, we're talking about ways that fantasy football leagues should be catered to deal with the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Should there be a football season, we are both hopeful that there will be one, uh, even though we got some fun news to talk about later, just the opposite, but uh, neither here nor there. Um, The first thing I want to talk about it, we're going to go with the, from the more obvious ones to some stuff that's a little more obscure. So let's start with the easy stuff. Um, Obviously, you know, the potential to lose players to the COVID exempt list for two to three weeks is, you know, I feel like it's a very good chance that we're going to have at least a few, if not more than that, stars uh, potentially have to sit out for two to three weeks. Um, and one way of dealing with that is adding extra bench spots to each team so that way teams can carry extra players, backups, what have you. Um What is your, what are your thoughts? I'm going to try, I want to argue the positive and the negative of each one. If we can, this is hard for me because I really only see pod positives to this. Um, But tell me how you feel about adding extra bench spots to teams this year. So my first initial thought is that I'm actually against it. Oh Um, no. And the reason for it is because you want to try to keep the player pool very similar Um, And it also depends on how many IR IR slots you have active uh, in your leagues. So just as like an example, you know, when you are looking at picking up players now, you generally know what kind of guys are available that are last year was like the Tariq Cohen's of the world are sitting on on the waivers or Marvin Jones is or, um, you know, just just people that you look at, you're like, oh, do I really need Peyton Barber and his like four points a week on my on my bench? Um, or are you going to take, you know, more of a, a shot at somebody that has a has a higher upside? So if you add a bench spot, that's going to shorten the player pool by another, you know, 12 players, depending on on how many people are in your league. And so I. I don't know if you want to do that because if you have multiple IR slots active and there's multiple people on those, plus you're filling up your bench, you could be looking anywhere from, you know, 20 to 25 to maybe 30 players less in a player pool. 
And then at that point, who are you even going to be able to pick up anyway that's going to be useful if somebody goes out? So that's that's like my first thought on it is if you if you add bench spots and I'm sure we're going to talk about this and you and you have all these IR slots active and you have all these people on your IR plus you have all these people on your bench and you add another bench spot or two, I think that it would just cause the player pool to dry up to the point where if somebody goes out, you're not going to be able to pick up somebody that's useful anyway. So I guess my thought on it is COVID-19 adds a lot of unpredictability risk into the season. As far as you could draft an excellent team, you could lose two to three players and you could get absolutely sewered and not have anybody to start for two to three weeks. And in traditional fantasy football league settings, you probably don't have, you know, very many, if any backups on your bench. So then it turns into whoever that backup is probably on the waiver wire. And then it's just the first guy to log in or get the alert on his phone adds that guy and miraculously has an RB one for the next month and you're out. And so a lot of these things, take some of the volatility away from going up and down as far as team performance. Like you're going down because you lose CMC, but then the next person comes in off the waiver wire, grabs the new running back, and now they have an extra RB1 and say they were a back half of the league team. And now they're going to get two, three wins cheaply, in my opinion, um, just because they were the ones that were checked their phone first that day. Like all of these things, I think, take some of that up and down out and keep everything a lot more on an even steady plane as far as keeping the competition the same. Um, And just because you add extra spots doesn't mean that all of these people are going to, you know, go out and get their own handcuffs. Like there are still going to be people that draft the Tony Pollards of the world that don't have Zeke. Like he's still going to be on teams that uh, for non Zeke owners. Um, Can I, can I just hop in real quick on you? So, and, and I know that that's a potential issue. So I've, I have the ESPN side up now. I can pull up Yahoo too. And so like, I guess a potential solution to that is you have everybody go on waivers every day and there are no free pickups. Um, that was something else I wanted to talk about. I think a yeah, lot of these things need to be done in concert <coughs> with each other. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So like if you were to put, hey, to kind of eliminate that, hey, I got an alert on my phone that somebody's, out for the next three weeks and you all rush to your computer and you you pick up uh antonio gibson as an example and you is that his name antonio gibson see you later okay. darius geis <laughs> if you haven't listened to alex's thoughts on antonio gibson please listen to like the last 10 minutes of last week's pod or our last podcast episode 19 where alex says famously who is antonio gibson i had to look him up and now he's going to be the starting running back for the washington football team <laughs> famous not, last words i can't wait to see how who you talk about this week that's like no longer longer on a team or is now yeah, suddenly, we're not talking about players so yeah, right um yeah so if you were to put waivers on each day to eliminate that race to the keyboard um which i mean hurts me because i'm always at a computer for work purposes so i just pull up on my my work computer and just add players but i think in in being fair that if you were to have waivers process every day uh espn looks like it defaults to 10 o'clock other than your uh your weekly waivers uh or uh, we have it set at 11 so um if you were to have that every day where hey somebody goes out that gives everybody a full day to go in and and rebid or use your waiver spot um on on a player i think that would even the playing field a little bit so it's so it's not so much heavily skewed to the people that are um you know lazy and working behind a desk all day Hey, man, not everybody that works behind a desk is lazy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I take de- personal, de- I take yeah, personal def- offense to that. Definitely projecting a little bit on that uh, one. Sorry about that. Um, yes, I, I'm absolutely in agreement with you um, as far as doing daily over weekly waivers. Um, it's just it gives fantasy managers like more freedom 
under equitable like circumstances, it's the most equitable solution. And you're not like hurry, hurry ad because I've, I've done the hurry, hurry ad thing. And I've like, in my, in my haste, I've accidentally, I've dropped like the wrong person or I've dropped a player instead of temporarily dropping a defense, you know, like Mm -hmm. just like, Oh crap. Well, I wish I didn't drop him. And now that guy's on waivers until like two days from now. And yeah. Yeah. I I should have thought about that for longer than uh, one second. (laughs) Exactly. Cause I'm too busy trying to just get him on my team. So I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Now, invariably if we talk about additional bench spots and doing daily waivers and we're talking about player losing players, do you increase the fab budget, the free free agent auction bidding budget? Cause ultimately at the end of the day, we're talking about there being significantly more free agency moves being made. Are you in favor of, uh, my first thought was, I don't think it matters because everybody starts out with the same thing. Um, but, uh-huh. but I think that, you know, our league, as an example, has a hundred bucks. I know some leagues do 200. Is ben, hold on. Um, our, hold on. That that's just a joke. We're not sure. I'm not sure if gambling on fantasy football is legal or not. No, no, no. I'm saying the <laughs> no. I'm saying the free agent auction budget, not our buy-in. Ah, gotcha. Um, we don't have a buy-in so, now. Yes, our free agent ooh, auction. Bid. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> yeah, our, our Man, fan budget just, is a hundred bucks. Right. So, so the free agent auction budget, for those of you who don't know, gives you an, uh, a certain amount to bid on players during the year that. Um, if they're not on a team, instead of using a waiver spot, um, you can, whoever bids the highest on a certain player as a free agent, uh, over the weekend. So instead of waivers processing the free agent auction processes and whoever bids the most, uh, gets the player. So when you have a hundred, uh, auction dollars or budget dollars, um, everybody starts out with a hundred dollars. Somebody bids on a player, they win them for $10. They have 90. Everybody else still has a hundred. Um, and that's kind of where our save the sauce, uh, started from where, uh, you want to save your free agent auction budget kind of for when you actually need somebody. However, saving your sauce might be a little bit difficult, um, in, in the COVID era where you're going to have to make more moves like Jason's talking about. So does it make sense to increase it? Um, maybe so, you know, ESPN, um, has, you can set your budget anywhere from ten dollars to a thousand. A um, thousand seems like it's a lot, but at the same time, if everybody's playing under the same um, same field, I don't know if it matters. Um, but you're gonna, you know, depending on what you set it at, you're gonna have to figure out, you know, the same conundrum that you usually have is what should I be bidding on these players? But if you do right. daily waivers then I think you should increase it because that would, because you're going to have to spend more to get the players potentially. Um, then, then you, you know, normally wouldn't have to do because they would just be a free agent. So I, I, I think you should increase it. I don't know what's the right number. Um, I, I think a thousand's too way too high, honestly. Um, but if you were to double it, so whatever your league is now and you just double that, that number um at least for this year just to have it be um you know it's not too big of a significant change for the people that are in your leagues Uh, also if you if you're only doing waivers um i would strongly encourage you to go to the free agent auction budget because it's just way better um as as much more equitable yeah they're, they're right there's more skill involved instead of just sitting there waiting and saving your waiver pick until like four weeks down the line after everybody's used theirs um strongly encourage that. So I, I don't know. I, I think you have to increase it, especially if you do daily, but I, I don't know how much I know you're in favor of, of going as high as possible because you spend it all the time. I usually save my sauce for one, one big pickup, but I think that's going to have to potentially change this year. Yeah. I, uh, traditionally I, I'm not super scared about spending some fab and getting some guys, I will say that, you know, my advice would be to anybody in a fab system would really be like, don't spend it 
unless you are losing consistently or if you have a very obvious shortfall at one position. That, then, that's why you're usually spending it is because you're in last. Y- yeah, yeah, exactly. Like if you're in the last, if you're in the bottom half of your league, you should be evaluating spending some fab. If you're in the top two, three teams and like if you drop a game, like try not to overreact. Maybe everybody has a down week in fantasy. So I save wouldn't your sauce. Yeah, I'd save your sauce for the playoffs. And when you're trying to back up your guys and switch, you know, but we've talked about that extensively. Um, so where do you, where, where do you, where do you think you should, should increase it to? Should, are you, oh are man, you, I'd take as much fat you're, as you're you give on, me. I'll take as much yeah, fat as you give the, me. On the max it out. Yeah. Side I, of I'm things. on the I, thousand. Um, just, I, I'd rather play it safe and make sure that players have more, what I feel like is more than enough and give them the thousand because it's still even and everybody has the same budget and nobody mm-hmm. really knows how bad this will be or as an inverse of that, how not bad it'll be like, nobody knows how bad or not bad it will be. Like, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just saying, why not prepare for the worst? Like we're going to have, you know, what, like 40% of a team get sick just like it happen, has happened in baseball. Like, why not prepare yeah. for that and make sure that people have the the fab budgets available to them to try and address that should it happen to them? Or like we talked about before we pressed record. There are going to be teams, probably not in 12 mans, but probably in 10-man league teams, maybe in 12 mans, I hope it's my team, but like there's going to be teams that have Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, and Travis Kelsey. There's going to be teams that have the three the three person stack. And so say they get like three positive tests on Saturday and they choose not to play that game on Sunday. You lose three players and now it's like holy crap, what do I do? And your yep. opponent also has the ability to go out and pick waivers like they can go and add other people to try and, you know, reduce the pool that you have to choose from and you're just invariably like you're just just unloading fab and this could be like in the first month of the season and now if you're on a hundred dollar budget like what what do you do for the rest of the year so like say if it happens again or if it's another position or if you lose a guy for an extended amount of time like i don't know i mean it's just so there's it's so unpredictable i'd rather just have it than like i would hate to be in a situation where it was like bumped up from 100 to 150 and then you're six weeks in and everybody's been bidding as if the only budget was 150 and then you get like six weeks in and everybody's like holy crap this isn't enough and i don't know if you can change it or people won't want it changed because that's not how the season started like i'd rather just prepare for the worst just keep everybody on the same playing field and make sure people theoretically have enough money to add and drop players like that's i guess that's yeah. where i come from yeah no I, I don't disagree with that and i think that you know the biggest thing with any of this is just communicating it to the people in your league of being like hey this is what we're doing this is why we're them doing not it. threaten to drop out or quit well <laughs> whatever like if you but you like it's really important to communicate hey this is what's just what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. And we'll, we'll try to figure it out next year. Hopefully when things are back to normal, but even, even in your situation where you have Mahomes, Tyreek and, and Kelsey, and let's just say the game says postponed, right. And they're not marked as out. Then you can't even, you can't even move them to your IR spot because it's postponed. Right. Then so what then do you do? So then what do you do where you have to go you pick drop up three bench players? Guys. You have to, or you punt the week. Well, that's that's my question is, should a commissioner be willing to step in in that situation and say, hey, you know, you're obviously screwed here. You can drop those three guys, replace them and you get like bird rights to their like you don't have to spend any money to repick them back up um, the, the very next week that, you know, they default back to your team um, to Try that to is like, like some help. next level commissioner. Yeah. Like commissioner, it's, it's a lot, but at least you're at least you'd like. There has to be some sort of conscience for you to be like. I, you can't just screw someone, especially if if you are putting in theoretical money. I was going to say, and if people like are paying entry fees, and we know people spend money on fantasy football. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. But like, that's just. I mean. 
it's really putting commissioners to the test to really police this. Like you're going to find out a lot about whether or not you have a quality commissioner or not this season based on how they choose to handle fantasy football of all things during a global pandemic. Like, yeah, well, you're screwed. Good luck. Like, I mean, that, that is a fair, that is a fair way to do it because it could impact everybody equally. But also once you start doing our theoretical, Hey, you can drop these three guys and, and I will literally add them back on your team come Tuesday morning outside of the waiver system and drop the three players that you picked up to, to make your team back whole, then you're going to have to do that potentially for every single team the entire year for any postponements. But if they're marked out, then you can use the IR slots if, if you have them. So it's just, it's going to be messy. It is. And a lot of it's going to be on ESPN and Yahoo while in other hosting services to really try and make it as easy as possible for these yeah. guys to put people in, in IR slots. Like, you know, give them that out yeah, I, designation. I do, right. I do wonder if, what they're going to do because I feel like they will generally just put like PPD on, on a game and not mark a players out. So may, hopefully they'll be changing that. Um, but it's something to be aware of. If they don't, then I, I think it is the commissioner's job in those those situations to kind of come in and make make the call of, hey, you can drop this. I'm going to add those add those three people back on. And as long as it's fair for everybody and you're doing it consistently, I don't think anybody should have an issue with that because, yeah, like you you want it to be fair. Yeah, and there's two. I guess there's two different ways we can go with this too is like with the cancellation of college football it's going to be easier for games to be postponed and then made up potentially on fridays and saturdays you know right now there's no nfl football on those days so that's one thing um but do you add so 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 do you add the extra ir slots so that way if say say ESPN or whoever your host site is gives you that IR designation, do you? But you only have like one, maybe two IR slots, so it's not like you can put two to three guys there. Or heaven forbid, you have players on two teams playing against each other, and that game is postponed. Like you know, you're talking yeah. however many players. Like, right? Do you? Because you're not going to have like five IR slots. It's just not going to happen. It, so e, you're right. E, ESPN, you can have four IR slots active. That's the max at ESPN. Do you know what the max on any other platform is? Yeah. Yahoo, you can have 10. <laughs> can we have our league on Yahoo? <laughs> no. <laughs> but that's the thing is I, I think you still have to make the rules IR the slots. same where... Hey, only one of these is for injury designations. Like like they have been historically, at least in our league, where we have an IR slot and somebody gets hurt. Instead of dropping that player, you can just stash him on your injured reserve spot and pick somebody else up for free. Um, but if... Right, so you can have four. And I, w- I would add the caveat that only one of them can be used for injury, for injury similar to the past, right? You, you, if four people get hurt, sorry, you can still only use one IR slot. The other three slots on ESPN would be for COVID specific, um, players being out. And that way, you know, it's another thing as a commissioner, you'd have to monitor, but you communicate to everybody and be like, come on guys, help me out here and be like, Hey, if somebody's injured, you can move them to IR slot, but you can only have one injured player. The other three specific for COVID. And I, I think that would seem logical and fair um, as long as the COVIDs are, are marked out like we just talked about. So back again, you know, I mean, trying to talk about ways to make this equitable and have teams affected by COVID still be able to compete. Do you think about changing the required positions for your league? Not not the required number of players, but instead of requiring two running backs and two wide receivers, do you require one 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 running back, one wide receiver, and two extra flexes? So that way it's easier to backfill spots. So you'd have Ooh. 
one quarterback, one running back, one wide receiver, one tight end, and three flex. Just so it's easier on people who are affected by COVID to Man. still field teams. But that would really change your potential draft strategies too. Maybe you it could would. St- I mean, yeah, yeah, but you could take four wide receivers to start the draft and only be going with one running back. Yeah, but that one running back would be horrible. Maybe. But I'm I, like, I'm just saying that uh, it, it would totally turn leagues on its head from what your traditional setup is. But hasn't COVID already done that, I guess, is my point. This is going to be the only Maybe. fantasy football league year like this, hopefully ever. God, if this is a two year thing, <laughs> oh my goodness. I hope yeah. this is a one year, le- one year thing. But if we're trying, if we're talking about making it easier for teams that are affected by losing multiple players, it's, I mean, it's, it's much less intimidating for me if I lose a running back knowing that I can go and pick up like, the Cole Beasley's of the world that that'll maybe get me like seven to 10 points and just put them in at, fl- at a flex than yeah. going and picking up like somebody that's Sony I Michelle. know. <laughs> yeah. I, or somebody I know that's going to get me less than five points and just having no hope. Yeah. Hmm. Man, that is a, <laughs> that's a tough question. I think I like it. I just know, like I inver- I know that invariably, and in the leagues that I'm in, I'm there's gonna be a team, if not two, where somebody is just railroaded from either postponed games or sick players or whatever. That every like, it's just not. It's not gonna be fair to them. It's just like, or or me if it's me. Like I'm just gonna be like pissed yeah like why did i bother why did why did i bother yeah. or it's, if you're right, not when, doing right especially when fantasy football is supposed to be fun first and foremost yeah right? right and if it's and if it's not the daily waivers and everything and i'm just missing out on everybody or if i lose half my fab in the first two weeks because i had two people or three people get sick and i'm out here chasing backups and i don't have ir slots to put like it's just I want to just try and make this as easy. I guess I'm a fan of making this as easy for somebody to remain competitive, no matter how badly they're affected by COVID. Now, granted, it would obviously be less competitive. (laughs) Like Tony Pollard is not as good as Zeke and like, Saquon's backup isn't as good as Saquon. Like there's nobody that's going to argue that, but at least you have the ability to theoretically go out and get that person without having to drop Saquon to do it. Or you don't have to, or like you don't have to put in somebody that's in some three headed timeshare. Like imagine if you had to go out and pick up like Daryl Henderson as your backup or as your player, because you, you lost your team to COVID and you needed to put in a running back. Like, right. So I'm I'm a fan of dropping it down to one at each position and doing three flexes. Uh, I don't think that our league will do that by any means, but I mean, I think that it's something that people should consider because I think it would be a great way to add some more flexibility for people that lose. You know, like if you lose a tight end, like, or or if you if there's a tight end out there that you think you know, could have a decent week and a good matchup. If you want to like throw Jarwin or Gesicki or somebody in that went undrafted instead of trotting out Daryl Henderson or, or the like, or yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Cause in our league, you can at least start a tight end at the flex spot. So that does yeah. open up another position potentially, or like a Darren Fells, even where you hope he catches a touchdown. Oh, he was a monster. Or, or, he got touch touchdown after touchdown. So, yeah, no, that's that's interesting and something that I had not thought about. Um, so, yeah, we can I mean, your your point of just trying to make this as easy and convenient as possible really makes a lot of sense um, because we don't know the craziness that's going to be happening. Theoretically, we hope that there's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But as soon as something does happen, you have to have a plan in place. And so if you were to just say, hey, 
you you can literally fill a flex spot with anybody you want other than quarterbacks in, in ours because it's not a super flex. Um, wow. Yeah, I, I'm open to that, actually. I, I think that that's... It'd be a one-year deal. Thi- one-year deal. Yeah, it's just a, a one-year off, but at least it's a, hey, here's kind of like to make an olive it, branch to, to help it out for you. Yeah, and I, I guess my thing is like, I'd rather be much more like proactive in trying to get fantasy football and people through seasons without being completely discouraged than being somebody that's like, well, that's not what fantasy football is. And a fantasy football team has to have two running backs and two wide receivers. Cause that's what our league has always been. It's like, okay, well, there's also never been this thing called COVID-19. Like, like, I mean, what if right. it happens to that part? Like, um, and then, so, in the same vein, not not the same, but similar, uh, what do you feel about the shift from drafting individual quarterbacks to drafting team quarterbacks? Because that, to me, is similar because then you aren't, you know, in the 11th hour rushing out to get Pat Mahomes back up. You theoretically already have that person and you're and people aren't forced to make, you know, 60 minute waiver claims right before games kick off. They theoretically are fine and they're still starting that quarterback. Like, what if that person is busy that day? What if they get a late notification? What if they don't get the notification? And then they find out that their quarterback sat and they just never didn't know. Yeah, well, it. For clarification, I think you have to turn the waivers off on sun, after Saturday so that everybody's just available to be picked up and dropped on Sundays. Um, so just you want free pickups of, and drops on Sundays up until on what? On Sundays. Up until 11 uh, or up until noon kickoff? Yeah, uh, yeah up, uh, right. Up until the uh, until the players lock when the games start. At noon. That, that Right. That way... Or 12 Central. Hey, hold on. Right. Every, every day you have your waivers but when it gets to sunday it's just a free like sunday morning it's just got to be a free-for-all because if you wait until 11 o'clock I, there's just there could be a lot going on for a lot of people sunday mornings too and so it's just yeah one of, one of those things where even even if you had people go on waivers and their game isn't until three o'clock or god forbid a seven o'clock game or even a monday night game when it's not announced that somebody's out until until like two hours Imagine before the game. Imagine you're the Monday night team and you lose your yeah. quarterback an hour, 90 minutes before kickoff. The other team goes and picks up the backup and you don't have a quarterback. Like, I mean, the person you're playing is that, well, they probably don't have a spot available to pick them up. They might not. Or they might have somebody in that game. You know, if they have yeah. somebody playing in that game, you drop that person. Like I would gladly drop like Adrian Peterson. If I can go and pick up Dax backup, you know, if it's like an interconference, the, the red rocket, Andy Dalton. Yeah. Like I would, Oh, I would totally do that. Like you wouldn't. Uh, it depends on how nice I'm feeling. Yeah. Well, it's exactly what it, but would you go so far as to text your opponent and be like, Hey, by the way, you have like 60 minutes to make this move. And no. I'm, I know it's a Monday night and you got kids and Timmy needs to go to school in the morning and he's got homework, but like oh, Timmy, I know like, so like the, the team quarterback makes so much sense to me again from a easiness Ease standpoint, fairness, but if, somebody, if somebody gets hurt, then do, do you want that person keep... to go to waivers if somebody gets hurt? Well, may I mean not necessarily, but you think people so are going to be out here bidding thirty bucks on Andy Dalton? Maybe, <laughs> but I if you give them a thousand dollars, then yeah, they might be bidding thirty <laughs> bucks on Andy Dalton. Um, if you so like let's say Drew Brees gets hurt in the first quarter and Jameis Winston comes in Oof. and throws for three hundred fifty yards the last two and a half quarters. Do you get those 350 yards on top of whatever Drew Brees did for the first quarter and a half? It's team QB. You get the team Ah, QB stats. I think, I think that's weak actually. But then, I mean, I don't know, I guess how often does that actually happen? 
You know, like, yeah, I, I don't I, know in history where like a, 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 a starter has done poorly and then the backup comes in and lights them up for 300 in the second half. Like, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick probably replacing, uh, Tua, if or, Tua has a slow start yeah, to the season. <laughs> right. Yeah. You don't know. That, <laughs> or like that's, or uh, that's Josh enough. Allen last season. No, not Josh Allen. Uh, what was his name? Now I feel silly. Uh, starter for the dolphins last season got benched. Got drafted by uh, the isn't Cardinals. it Rosen? Rosen, Josh Rosen. Um, like Joshua. Yeah, but so like or or as just to keep going with New Orleans, like do you get Taysom Hill points if he's lined up at wide receiver and he catches a touchdown? Does that does that count as a New Orleans quarterback touchdown? Like I don't I don't know, and I I think that that's would an interesting. Things. I mean that would be interesting even from a ESPN standpoint to try and figure out like even if you don't like if you have Drew Brees. And you, you know, if you do the team quarterback, do you get the four point passing touchdown and then the six point reception? If he throws it to Taysom Hill, do you get, is that a 10 point play? But I mean, that's really, that's a scoring anomaly in a lot of ways. Yeah. I I bring up Taysom Hill, but it should be noted that he was stripped. um, He was stripped of his QB designation. He stripped of the QB. Yeah. Hill's role allowed him to no fantasy value and designate as a QB. Um, he's on the tight end two radars note. Hill will be stripped of tight end flex eligibility and changed to a quarterback. If positioned as the Saints starter at any point this season is, is what the okay. right up on Taysom Hill says. So he is actually only listed as a tight end. Well, then there gets, that gets rid of that conundrum. Yep. So, yep. I'm in favor of the team QB just because I think it's much more likely that you lose a quarterback that test positive Sunday morning than you do some guy getting sat and his backup coming in, going off for 150, like, or, you know, 30 points. Like there's a, generally a reason why backups are backups. And I can't really think of many other than like Jameis that I think would even be, have the ability to do it. Right. So that's my question is let's say Lamar Jackson goes out and he would be you would be able to put him on an IR slot. Would you rather still start whoever his backup is instead of going and picking up Kirk Cousins? Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, so maybe you're going I, and picking up the Minnesota Vikings QB anyway. Well, yeah, but I like I, but I guess I then yeah, wanna, you wouldn't be able I, to. I don't think you'd, yeah, I don't think you'd want to be stuck with Baltimore's backup quarterback when you can go pick up a legit starter that's sitting out there at that point. Right. Cause it's not like you can put a team QB in an IR slot. So then Correct. you'd have to put it on your bench, drop somebody else to pick up a different team QB to plug and play. And maybe there's so, there's so many theories. This is going to be crazy season. Yeah. That's, that would be the main reason why I wouldn't do the team QB thing because you wouldn't be able to IR slot them if you've set it up to have a lot of IR slots available and chances are you don't want to start the backup anyway. Um, there, there's only, you know, small number of things where that would make a difference and it would be Sunday night games or, or Monday night games or, you know, whatever. So I, I think on that one, I would be more staunchly opposed than anything else you've actually suggested so far. Yeah. And maybe, I don't know, maybe I just, you know, I, I want to sit here and say that I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't, you know, be that person to go and pick up the backup quarterback and screw over the team that I'm playing. But I know that if it was the difference between me making my fantasy playoffs or not making my fantasy playoffs, it would, would be very difficult. It would be very difficult for me to be like, no, you, I'll let you start someone. It's, it's okay. Uh, I'll, yep. I'll potentially lose even if I'm up by a half point. Like, yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know. I hear you. So I, that's, that's I, I would be very surprised if we run into that. Um, I would hope not because again, most of your, your team's probably gonna be locked anyway. Um, as we talk fab and picking up and dropping players, what about trading fab? With other teams. No. Hard no? No. Why? Just too much. Just that's that's a little too much flair. So so like you would be trying to so let's just say theoretically you go pick up Tony Pollard because you 
bid the highest on him and then you try to trade him for more fab than you I try you to just trade try to him to the Zeke owner if Zeke gets sick yeah so and you, I could trade him to the Zeke owner for fab for for more than what you acquired so you're like trying to play like a stock market yeah and be buddy. like oh, low, well if you, would have, if you would have spent a little bit more on Dude, Tony Pollard stocks um, only go you, up Okay, Dave. Um, <laughs> so if you if you said that, um, hey, I got I got powered for a hundred bucks. If you give me one twenty five, I'll I'll trade him to you. I I think that that's just. Or hold on, let's go much. back to our. Let's I don't go. even know if the systems are set up to do that. Honestly, no, I, it might have to be manual. But let's let's talk about it like this though. <sighs> Killing me. Let's talk about it like this though. You pick up. You pick up, you know, that team in the 11th hour of the Monday night game loses their starting quarterback. The other team picks it up and says, hey, buddy, I'll flip you your quarter, your backup quarterback for 100 fab. (laughs) (laughs) Like, that's just a special, special kind of evil. Yeah, the answer to that one's no. Especially if you're already giving people a thousand fab um, or more fab than they usually have. Um, I think just save your sauce and figure it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. That that's trading fab is that'd be that'd be ridiculous. Um, all right. There's so many there, like there's so much other stuff do, to do. do. So do you want you want to talk you want to talk playoffs real quick? I, yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you got? So. Well, no, I was just going to say, like, should we be expanding playoff um, eligibility for teams? So, like, in our league, which I think is a, the perfect way to do it. League. Right, 12-person 12, 12 league, we have seven teams get into the playoffs. So there's one bye, so it incentivizes getting first place. And five teams don't make it, seven teams do, which is more than half the league, which seems equitable. Um, there's usually a pretty tight race for that seven spot. It keeps more people more active during the year. So even if you're out of it early, uh, it, it gives you that shot to get in. Um, so the question is like, do you expand it to eight to, to have there be COVID, um, where somebody could get really, if there was a really you know, hardly the best... affected COVID team early in the season, maybe they're more viable to get that eighth seed and sneak in and demolish the playoffs. I mean, the seventh seed in our playoffs won the league last year. So that is accurate. And I was the first seed and I lost in the champ. Uh, never mind. Right. So it's uh, for, for a 12 teamer. Do you, you know, a lot of a lot of people only do six, so the, for the first and second seeds get buys. Um, I would encourage those those leagues to to add a seventh team, so it's that so the, spicy. the first so so that the first team does get the buy, and right, you kind of get that spicy meatball at the end there for the seventh team, which is actually always super competitive and usually comes down to the last weekend. Um, and then for like ten teams or even eight teams, you know, generally those are those are four team playoffs. Um, you know, do you say, Hey, we're going to expand this to six. If you have 10 teams, I don't know. That's a lot, but that way you have two buys for the top two teams. I would at least do five Uh, in a 10 teamer. Yeah, but you can't, you mathematically can't do five because if you have one buy, you'd have a three team final. What if you did one buy? Oh, You, you can't do an odd number. Huh? Well, how come That's it works seven, for seven? I should say, because there's one buy, and there's six teams playing. Gotcha. So with five, if you have a buy, there's four teams playing. So the like, unless you have the one seed go automatically to the championship game, which I think is weak. Yeah. Or you could do two weeks. You know, you could do a two week playoff, and hell, it's one year, right? Where you say, hey, we're gonna give the one seed a buy to the final, and we're gonna have a three team two week final where you just say, hey, this is what we're doing this year. And that way, first, second, and third place is determined over two weeks or something like that. I I think you can think outside the box when it comes to the playoffs. Yeah, you're adding weeks, and then you're reshuffling, and you'd start the playoffs a week earlier because anything – starting playoffs earlier is worth it, so that way your season doesn't end in week 17. So, Right. You'd want to avoid that. Yeah, so I'm I'm, I'm actually – like I would encourage people to – 
to do maybe a three team final if if you have a 10 team league or even an eight team league um, and you wanted to get five people in for some reason. Um, I, I think that is an intriguing option. The other thing that got floated in our league, too, is, you know, because wins can be so variable and, and you know, the top two teams can be facing each other that we could, you know, give out, hey, everybody gets a win for their matchup. And then if you're in the top half of your league for points scored, you get another win. So there, there would be a lot of manual going on. Um, but you can either go 2-0 two, two and o that week, 1-1 and one that week, or 0-2 oh that week. And that way you can, you know, if you start out bad or, you know, if if you score the second most points in a week, you don't get a loss. You get your one and one because you're in the top half of the league for points and you lost. I like that. So, I think it's a much more equitable, equitable way to do scoring. Uh, I know that it's it, it, it it's a more pop. It's a popular system, I think, in like the hardcore fantasy football Um you know, realm, the, the hardcore diehards, I think, are aware of scoring it like that. Um, I've, yeah, I've heard I mean, about there's, it. There's nothing elsewhere, worse than, than having the second most points in the league and losing. Yeah. And you're sitting there like picking your butt like, well, this sucks because I well, beat everybody yeah. else. So so at least you would get a win out of it. It was like two or three years in a row. I think I was top four in scoring or top three. And then I got eighth place. And so that's, I think, why we are seventh. And then that's, I think, why we added the seventh spot. It's like because you're not going yeah, to be fair, really far down. Right. But. Right. For people that are listening to this in our league, uh, that was not just to get Jason in the playoffs. I just want, want that to be known. It was because we were paying out the first place. And instead of paying out first place, we figured just giving them a buy was was better than than giving them a hundred bucks or whatever. Um, now, w- I want to talk about c- what constitutes a full season. Say, say somewhere down the line the season just gets canned because the people are getting too sick or it's too widespread and they have to say in week nine week or they have to pause or cancel the rest of the season. At what point do you say you call it and say, this is a full season and the final standings are and award out accordingly. I don't think you can do it unless the season completes. Honest, like really, I, I I think I think you should talk to your talk to the people in your league again. Communication is going to be so important on this stuff. I I think that if you don't have a season that goes the distance, I think you should give everybody their money back. So you're saying sixteen or bust? Yeah. See, I'm I'm not that. I would say 10. I would say get to double digits if you complete 10 weeks of the season. And then what you do is you just award by points scored, not by wins or losses because it's an incomplete season. You just give you hand out first, second, third based on points scored after 10 weeks, call it a full season. Yeah. I, I, I hear you on that, but let's say that somebody gets decimated by COVID and they're sitting in last place because, hey, it was only a 10 game season and they had, you know, half over half their roster be sitting out for three weeks at different points in the in those 10 weeks. They literally never started their drafted roster and you just have to say go go kick rocks thanks for your donation we're gonna we're gonna spread that to the people that didn't have any issues I, well, I don't i don't dig that i guess uh, to me it's not go kick rocks it's hey we had this established when we started the football season everybody agreed to 10 games if we get 10 weeks in that's a full season and we'll hand it out from there so it's sort of like at your own risk for that instead of doing all the time roster moves and everything else, getting, you know, two thirds of the way through the season and then just saying, no, just kidding. And giving everybody every, all their money back. Yeah. I, whatever you do, you just have to establish it at the beginning and stick to it. Also, I think that if things are really getting crazy, like week three, week four, like it's not unreasonable to get everybody together on a, on a zoom call and be like, all right, guys, listen, this is, Check this in. is not, Right. This is not what we thought it was going to be. It's even 
potentially more crazy than we thought it was going to be and just say, hey, we're, we're going to play this out um, and people might not like it, but here's everybody's money back. And, you know, th that way there's no hard feelings on it. Um, and, you know, I think <laughs> ultimately what's going to happen, half the league is going to be like, oh, this is great. And the other half's going to be like, oh, man, this sucks. Um, but whatever. I, I Yeah, I mean... The thing is, like, even with the most basic of elementary rule changes in any fantasy football league, nobody's going to agree. Like, you're not going to get true. you're not going to get ten people to agree. You're probably not going to get eight people to agree on what should happen. So, like, at what point do you draw the line? Like, should should there like should commissioners draw up all of these topics as like surveys and send them out to their league just to see where their league stands on it? Maybe I mean before before you draft, maybe that's a good idea. So you at least yeah. understand what the league thinks of it. Um, maybe you also consider if it is a money league to reduce what your fees are for this year, just because it's going to be such a crazy year. That's another thing to contemplate. Um, yeah, and you do you do not want to be discussing all this before the draft starts because usually people no. get pretty fired up ab about any rule change. Um, especially if you've been doing this a while with the same group of guys. And so like early yeah, now, you, yeah, you got to really do it right. I mean, it's the, the season starts in four weeks, so you got, you got to be ahead of it and, and be talking about this now and be having rules meetings. Yeah. And that's why we wanted to put this podcast out. Now we, Alex and I were talking about, you know, off air about a bunch of the different things. We kind of discussed a couple, two, three podcasts ahead, what we want to start talking about. And we felt like now is a good time to get this out before leagues get too far down the road of getting into, you know, draft time, you know? So, yeah. And I, I'm really interested to hear, like, if we're missing something here and I, I feel like we're being relatively comprehensive, but if, if there's something that, you know, we, we're not talking about, please reach out to us. We'd, we'd love to hear, um, you know, kind of some things that you guys are running into and we'll happily bring it up next time. Um, because it, it, it helps us run our leagues better and hopefully it helps you run your leagues better too, just by listening to us. So if, if we're missing something like send it to us so we can try to get the word out. Yeah. Um, we are at the FF Sackos on all of our social medias message us anywhere we're almost up to 100 instagram followers we are chugging along so follow us on insta if you're not whoop, whoop. there you go uh i only have one more thing and it's something that matthew barry is suggesting that i feel like is a touch on the morbid side but i think it's still I don't know. Maybe it's good advice and that is is this a, is this a dynasty league question if you're if a player dies no, geez, no, oh. <laughs> <All right. laughs> no, it's, it's for commissioners, especially, but something for all team managers to think about. And that is had adding someone as a, a second manager for your team, or if you're a commissioner, giving somebody your deputy commissioner responsibilities. So that way, if you know, if you as a commissioner either get sick, somebody close to you does, or you as a team manager get sick, like the last thing that you want to be stressing about is freaking fantasy football. If you got something crazy going on in your life, so maybe yeah, that's a great point. Maybe consider appointing a deputy commissioner or giving somebody backup access to your teams. You know, if it's your brother, who you know, whatever yeah. fellow fantasy enthusiast. So no, that's a. That that's a dynamite idea just to make sure your league doesn't get locked. Yeah. Um, or like and, just and somebody else can, can set up yeah. your team for you too. Yeah. And it doesn't go to hell in a handbasket because there's no commissioner there to police like waiver wire or the IR slots that you've added and all this other craziness. Right. So right. Uh do you have anything else? Is there anything else I missed? Um, I don't think so. I'll, I'm interested to kind of see what we end up coming up with um, as a yeah, in, as in our, our individual league. league. Yeah, um, I guess my I, I I I don't hate anything that you said. I love the traditional way that we have the league set up, but you know, it's a non-traditional. To give leader. yourself more to to give yourself more flexibility, 
and say, hey, we're just going to have three flex spots instead of one and, and loosen up the restrictions on the running back wide receiver um, strictness and more foul, I don't think it really matters all that much. No, I mean, but you I spend would say it those, if you're out and you don't if you don't. Yeah, so I mean, th- th- those would be the two that I like. I, I I enjoy the just, hey, let there be as many IR spots as possible, but try to just restrict one for injury just to try to help people not have to drop players. Um, I, I think the league commissioners have to be stepping in to help help teams add or drop players or or manually adjust scores if if, hey, this got locked for some reason and I was going to pick up Kirk Cousins and they send you the text like a minute before the game starts. Like, I, I think you can do your, you know, you just send a text to the entire league and saying, hey, I got this. I'm showing you. I'm going to manually adjust that person's score because um, it's only fair. Um, yeah, or heaven and, forbid you're in Walmart and you don't have like internet service on your phone trying to make this add and drop at 1155. Like... Right, yeah, you're sitting out there with like Cricket Mobile and like the Bahamas yes. or something yeah, like checking that. Checking your Not, offshore yeah. accounts. <laughs> yeah, getting getting hit by a hurricane and you can't adjust your fancy on it, but somehow you can get a text message through to me. <laughs> Happy to help you out. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's gold. <laughs> but but yeah, I, I I just think that it's gonna be really important, really hands on commissioners this year. Um and people are just going to have to be flexible and understanding. Nobody's trying to screw you. Um, no. And just, you want it to be fun. You want it to be as fun, fun as fun possible and fair. for 12. Yeah, fun, fun and fair yeah, as possible. For anywhere from like 8 to 12, 16 people. Like, why, why make it harder on anybody, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the, right. The, the daily waivers make sense um, just to keep it more fair. So I, I, I do like a lot of what we've talked about today. Um, and I, I hope that other people have dug it too because I, I think it's helped me kind of process some things that maybe I wasn't quite quite thinking about. Yeah. Before we sign off, let's talk about a little bit of newsy stuff. Uh, Darius Geis is no longer with the uh, Washington football team. Hello, Antonio Gibson. Alex, what are your thoughts on Antonio Gibson after destroying him in the last podcast? Um, F D G is my, um, my thoughts on that one. Yeah. I mean, his, uh, his arrest charges kind of make that clear. Like the guy, yikes, man. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I best wishes to Antonio Gibson. Um, I really hope that you don't do well this year though. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to eat those words. (laughs) You're going to have to put your... I'm okay. I'm I'm pretty I had to look up who he was before we started recording this podcast. Antonio Gibson. That Antonio Gibson. Yes. Um, And then where are you drafting... Whatever. Where are you drafting Lamar Miller of the New England Patriots? That's a great question because he could take some of the the backfield targets away from James White, depending on what's going on there. He's he's the most complete back on their roster. Uh, he's been one of the better better backs in the league the last six years. Uh, Out of the league the last year, right? Yeah, right. He tore his ACL in, in uh, training camp and then the Texans signed Carlos Hyde. Um, yeah, I just think that Man, that that whole backfield is almost turning into a giant stay away from me, including James White at this point. Dumpster fire, baby. Um, Light a match. Yeah, I, I love me some James White, but I I think it's just a stay away. I think it really means that Sonny Michelle is a lot more hurt than most people think. If he's yeah, he's more hurt. He's probably going to stay on the pup. So the, initially, you know, I thought there would be some value taking him in the ninth or tenth round. And now he's a complete stay away for me. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't think you can take him. Um, who, who's their other backup running back? Harry, Damis, Damian Harris, and then Rex Burkett. Damian Harris. Yeah, I stay away from them. And you have to factor in the fact that Cam Newton um, is like rushes the ball towards the end zone a lot. You know, so if they like, if there's no running back getting goal line carries there, what's the like? Do you really want to? What's the running back be wasting value? Your, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that really, 
kind of sucks for that whole backfield. <laughs> so I, I guess, I mean, I guess Lamar Miller is the guy that you want. Um, In what, uh, I don't think seventh, six. Yeah, I'd have to look, but uh, like you can't really rate him any higher than like the thirtieth ranked running back, though, right? Yeah, I wouldn't think. So. Well, may, maybe I don't know. Maybe like. Yeah. So you, I mean, your drag and drop plop right now is running back 30. It's just like abstractly. Yes. Okay. Huh. That is, uh, that's an interesting plop there, my friend. I'm, can uh, I, can I just, I just said that off the top of my head. Um, so let's see here. Plopping wise, that, that puts it. So we have James White consensus at 30. Jonathan Taylor, 31, Madison, 32, Sony Michelle, 33, Cam Akers, 34. So yeah, 30. Yeah, I guess I would, I mean, I would take. Well, we, we, we had Darius guys at 29, so maybe 29 and just drop Darius guys to zero. That, that might be more realistic. I have, I had guys at 33 at the position, so. Yeah, I mean, Michelle, Michelle, I had a 34, so there you go. <laughs> right. <laughs> just take out those two, put in the other two. Done. It's just going to be hard. It's hard for Antonio Gibson because, like, AP is still there. Like, I think, And Peyton Barber. Yeah, yeah, true. That's going to yeah, be... I don't, I don't, like, th- those are two backfields now that are just, like, complete stayaways. N- yeah. Not that they were, like... Hey, yeah, I can't wait to have that Washington football team running back on my team before, but um, it's just extra, yeah, not, extra. Yeah, no, it's now. even more of a whatever. So, all right. Well, if you've made it this far, please subscribe on our YouTube channel. If you no no bachelor talk this uh, week. No, but I don't. Ha- is there something that you need to get off your chest? No, I was I was just waiting for it. No, I got nothing for you. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I let you down. Are you feeling okay? I I I'm feeling a little. I have a headache today, but I, I'll be okay. No, I'm I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm good. I'm good. All right. Sorry. I I was waiting for it when you're like news. Hey, here's some bachelor. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what I sound like? <laughs> Hey, News, hey, a you're, so bachelor. Bachelor. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> you're no, that's not what you sounded like. But uh, a couple of pods ago when you impersonated me, it was better than I wish that it was. So, um. <laughs> During the middle of the draft. Uh, oh, I know you shouldn't really take a running back here. Shut it's up, like, Alex. Alex. He's yeah, right well, on. Was yeah, he's, yeah, you're too good at Are that. Are we doing a mock draft on our next pod? I don't even, I feel like half the league doesn't, is, has changed in the last like two weeks. So we should probably figure something out at some point. Yeah, we probably should. Uh, yeah. I, right. Like I, I need to update my Clyde Edwards Hilaire rankings and just put them at four and just move on. Four, like fourth overall. What do you mean? Put them at four. Yeah, screw it. <laughs> just put them at four. Like if he's like really good, then you'll be like, see, I told you I, I had him ranked at four and <laughs> like, it's just easier. I don't know. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> we're just each going to pick like one or two players and an abstract at a position. Be like, Oh, Hey, I told you David yeah. Montgomery was running back seven. <laughs> but what if he is? <laughs> what awesome. if he- also, I, I was reading. We are uh, delegitimizing Twitter, so, this operation. <laughs> oh, um, we, yeah. We, so uh, well, the new. Well, well, hold on, though. The the new. Uh, so the new Monday Night Football team, uh, Lewis Riddick's on it, who was a former uh, NFL personnel guy. And he he and like their ESPN draft took uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire number one overall in their league. No, he did not. Yes. Are you kidding? No, look it up. Lewis Riddick. He, and he goes, I see, I get a lot of crap for this, but I took Saquon number one three years ago or two years ago or whatever that was. And I was right then and I'm and I'm right now. So like literally there are people taking Clyde Edwards Hilaire at number one. And he oh and he is God. a Mon- and he is a Monday night football color analyst. So I mean yeah, I I made that as a joke, but at the same time, like there are people that have them ranked inside the top five, clearly. Wow. 
Man. I mean, top 10, I understand. But, like, the guy hasn't played offense. He's, like, 5'8", five 5'7". Five He's going to have 14 hey padded practices and no preseason games. I yeah, digress. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Yeah. That Andy Reid lethal offense. But... All right. Shades of Shady McCoy flashbacks. Shady. All right. Well, on that note, let's transition to our social media page. If you've made it this far, please. Good luck by you. I mean, thank you. So, like, round of applause. For round of applause this to one. you for listening to us for yeah. an hour and five plus minutes. Um, please follow us on all of our social media as we are at the FF Sackos. Visit our website, the fantasy football uh, for all of our rankings uh, by position consensus, uh, you know, against what ESPN has people ranked at as well as our top 125. Um, and then please, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, like subscribe, uh, hit the bell, get the notifications. And if you are, watching this or have an apple phone please rate rate us give us five stars uh we are going to be reading our uh apple reviews as well as other comments and reviews in one of our upcoming mailbag podcasts so <clears throat> leave whatever you feel like writing and it might just make it on the show Lewis Riddick on Twitter. Running back Clyde Edwards Hilaire should be the first overall pick in fantasy drafts this season. I've had some success with taking rookie running backs first overall in the draft in the past. No preseason games and no joint practices means you better have some inside info out as to how players are progressing in camp. And I can assure you that Clyde Edwards Hilaire is progressing very well given what they've been able to do to this point. So, top five? Good night. <laughs>